Thank you for taking up uh, your time to participate in this uh, session on the topic competitive advantage of a culturally competent um, workplace. For those of you that don't know me, my name is William Ta and I, I work at the St. John Multicultural Newcomers Resource Center. I am the go-to person for the Atlantic Immigration Pilot Project. I've been working within the settlement sector for the past four years, and I'm very passionate about creating a inclu cultural inclusive workplace. The changing phase of our workplace. At the Newcomer Center in St. John, for example, we are nine staff uh, on team, and we're from eight different countries. So nine people from eight different countries. Amongst us, we speak a lot of different languages. I know this is not um, common for other offices, but believe me, with the trend uh, we're going with immigration, this will surely be happening soon in our region and, and the rest of um, the Atlantic Canada. Now, with the growing with the growing diversity of the workplace, um, it can it can become a ch opportunity as where as a as a challenge. So all depends on how we manage these people that have come with from from different cultural background. So when these people come, they they just don't bring the technical skills. I know we are more, as employers, we are more interested in the technical skills and, and we hire them because of the technical skills. But let's know that they don't want to come with the technical skills. They also bring along the culture, the, the, the values, the norms, and, and the way of, of doing things. So to better understand these people, it will be good to understand both the technical skills and the soft skills. For the technical skills, we don't have uh, we don't have problem with that because through through our recruitment process, we focus more on on the technical <clears throat> on the technical skills. Now let's let's quickly look at the difference between a technical skills and a soft and a soft skill. Um, so the technical skills. Uh, corresponds to knowledge and abilities people need to perform the work. So uh, calculating taxes for accountant, writing codes for, for computer programmer, uh, drawing blood for lab, lab technicians. These are all things people learn, learn through in universities and colleges. So it's easy for them to adapt. So if you are a programmer in the Ukraine, it's easy for you to become a programmer in Canada. But now when we talk about when we talk about soft skills, and soft skills um, can be summarized as people's ability to manage themselves. So uh, time, emotion, communication, and all those things. Those things are things people learn because they, they grew up in a society. Those are things that people learn because they were part of a certain group. So you don't have to go to university for that. And you can have a very great soft skills in your country. If you are from South Africa and you move to Canada, you will not have a, it's possible you may not have um, a great, a great soft skills. And it's all because of what our values are. So because of this, it's very important if we have to retain and um, retain and keep all these new people we are bringing in our community. So we, the New Brunswick Multicultural Council in partnership with all immigrant serving agencies across New Brunswick develop a training, a cultural competency training specifically for employers. Um, so this is a three hours session and usually we go with a 15 minutes break. And the training is uh, you can have, you can, have more time, we're very flexible with the time. It can be less than three hours, it could be more than three hours, but the recommended time, we have a standardized training for, for three hours. And because this is standardized, it's almost the same across New Brunswick. So this training is a combination of presentation, group discussion, and activities. And usually before the training, we, um, we have a 
pre-training needs assessment where we meet with the employers and you have a questionnaires to fill up just to identify your specific needs. And if, if you have a specific area that you want for us to address in the training, we can also include that in the training. And after the training, we do um, we do an evaluation. So this is the, the structure of the training. So it's in basically in three parts. The first one will be understanding cultural differences. The second one will be communicating effectively, effectively across culture and then trying to understand cultural shock and adoption. So in understanding culture, we cover everything for defining culture. We look at the iceberg model, like those culture that are on the surface, those are the bottom. We look at stereotypes, we look at different dimensions of cultures. And then uh, we come to communication where we look at both verbal and nonverbal communication. And then we, we try to look at specific sector and see if there are things you, you would like to, to focus on, for example, if you are doing, uh, you're running a trucking company and you want to do more about communication, how to communicate with truck drivers and all those things, we kind of like tailor that into the training. And it's important to look at cultural shock in this training because as people come and go through the cultural shock, at the point where they're experiencing the cultural shock, that is the time they make decision either to stay in New Brunswick, to stay with your organization, or to leave. So what the training will do to help you to understand that experience they are going through, that emotion, and how you can help them overcome cultural shock and get adjusted. So the cost of the training is uh, $500 per, se per session, but also, like I say, most of these things we are we are flexible. I know some organizations, you have a, a very small team, you are a team of five, six people, and you you, we, you, you cannot have, you might not be able to afford this for your, for your team. But we also have combined sessions where you can, you can combine with other organizations and then we deliver this session. So we, we do the session usually for participants around minimum of 12 and maximum of 24. And because this session is a participatory session, so that's why we try to keep the numbers small so that we can manage it for everybody to participate in group works, in group activities, and so forth. So now the question will be, and, and I, I believe most of you will be thinking, what are the benefits of this training? Why do I need to do culture training. I, I already interact with a lot of people from different cultural backgrounds. I have traveled widely. But in short, the benefit of this training is very critical to the success of your organization. Let's take up back to the, to the uh, immigration trend, to the demographic trend, and see the amount of people that are coming to Canada from different countries. Now, 20% of our population uh, first generation immigrants, immigrants, not including the children, and they are from 130 different countries. Now, when you're doing business, both not only your team, but it's likely that your customers will also be a newcomer. Everybody along the supply chain, just people that are supplying you, uh, the technician are coming to fix your internet. Um, Everybody is like that you will come across a newcomer, somebody from different cultural background. So what this training will do will make you understand how to work and interact with these people and is very critical to the success of your business. But let's look at some, some points. Um, first, what this will do, it will increase respect. Like people that are coming now, the three main countries where people are coming from of late would be um, the Philippines, India, China. And most of these countries are, 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 has a high power, dis, uh, dis, a high power distance country. That is, they are very hierarchical. So the way of treating the, the supervisor and supervisee relationship is quite different from what we have here. So for example, they will, they will prefer to call the manager to put title on the manager. So they will call you 
sir, especially people from the Philippines will call you sir, ma'am, madam, mister. And we know we in Canada, we used to calling people by the first name. So this training will help you to understand those kind of things and it will increase respect amongst them. The next one is will be creativity. Now, I cannot over overemphasize the benefits of this training towards increasing creativity in your organization because people from different cultural backgrounds see problems in different ways and have different solutions de to derive at the same results. Now, with a combination of local staff and international staff, you have pro produced results that cannot be that, that cannot derive anywhere else. So to get the staff to be creative, the person will have to feel welcome. The person will have to feel part of the team. And in feeling part of the team, the person will have to understand and you will have to understand the cultural differences and be able to communicate effectively. This will also decrease unwanted surprises. Now let's look at let's look at it and, and someone come to your office, a new staff, you are just higher on, on the AIPP. The person came from from Nigeria and the person come to your office and you're talking to the person and we used to having this direct eye contact and the person is not giving you eye contact. And first thing you get surprised and you either start thinking whether the person is interested in the job or the person is just tired. But the training will help you to understand these things. Another one will be emotion. After two months, the person has done a very great job and you call them in your office and say, hey guy, you have been promoted. And the person either over responds or under responds. So you have to understand all these things, how people would, would respond to, to good news or bad news, the emotions or the tone of words. Or one common thing we see with, with new people that come is the use of uh, center product. Like we know most of our offices are sent free. Your new, it's likely your new staff first day to work will be wearing a very expensive perfume or cologne. And just so that you don't be surprised, uh, it will help you decrease unwanted surprises. And then you can be able to, to adjust to adjust to to that person culture. Now the question will be the question here will be who should adapt to whom? And and now and how can organization make the most out of the growing diversity across the workplace? So that's what this this training will help you do to know that how much can the person adapt and how much can the rest of the team adapt? Uh, there are many numbers on this and we will have a very good discussion on how to adapt. By the end of the day, it's good to tell newcomers the rules. Newcomers should know the rules in the organization. Another good one would be to increase participation from new staff. Now you have just have this uh, uh, new team or uh, new people in your team and you really want for them to participate, to be creative. How do we do that? Usually we come to, we have group discussions, we have brainstorming at the organizations, we have team meetings. And if somebody from different communications, communication style, the cultural communication is, is different. You have to understand this because there are communication patterns that we have to understand. In some culture, when the speaker speak, there is a little silence and then the other person speak. Whereas in other culture, in the middle of your conversation, another person can start talking. So can, in Canada, we're kind of like in between of the two. We don't like too much silence in between and we don't like for people to interrupt us. So we have to understand because if I come to Canada from a new culture where doing meetings, I have to wait to process the information before talking. It's likely that you will feel like I don't have ideas or I don't know what, um, what to say. So what happens? You continue to talk, you continue to talk, you continue to talk. And I'm just waiting for that brief pause to interject my idea into the discussion. So you have to understand communication pattern. And that's what this training will do to help you to communicate across culture. Let's go to, to trust and cooperation. 
especially and this would the train would talk length dimension of of caution and and if it depends whether the person from a individualistic culture or the person is from a collectivist culture how they would trust and cooperate with their other colleagues will also be very different so it's likely that during lunch time when you when you have two staff uh from from china during break time it's likely that the two of them will sit together and start to speak mandarin it's not that they don't want to speak english but they are more comfortable discussing in the original language. So let's talk about the training will also, the, one of the benefits of the training is to also overcome fear of mistakes and conflict. Now just imagine if you have a lot of different people together on the same team from different cultural background, even people from the same community together, there is always a potential for conflict uh, or people to make mistakes. But what this training will do will help us to overcome those fear. Will help us to develop uh, the confidence to work with people, to interact with people from different cultural backgrounds. Now, let's get this straight. This at the end of this three hours training, you are not going to leave the room being cultural expert. But what happened? You'll be able to identify cultural issues and address it in the appropriate way so that you can reduce conflict in your organization. And overall, it will just promote inclusion and equality in your organization, what, which is great for today's economy. Um, how can you get this, this training? This training is offered across New Brunswick by all the settlement agencies, but in, in St. John, you can contact me at the St. John Newcomer Center. Um, and I offer this training along with my colleague. I'm a certified cultural competency training. I've been certified by the New Brunswick uh, Multicultural Council. And you can also get this training from the YMCA. You can contact Jeremy. Jeremy is also a certified cultural competency trainer, or you can get it from my colleague, Sherry at Pru. Thank you very much for your time. And I look forward to hearing from you in the future.